Hi, welcome to Corium. My name is Laura Weber. I'm one of the residents in the NYU Bellevue Emergency Department. Today we're going to talk about posterior elbow dislocations. These are the second most common type of dislocation we see in the emergency department. They usually occur by fall and outstretched hands. When looking at the elbow joint, the humerus, the ulna, and the radius, the lateral and medial epicondyle in the humerus. The trochlea sits in the trochlear notch on the ulna with the coronoid process anteriorly and the olecranon posteriorly. The radius articulates with the humerus at the capitulum. Brachial artery and median nerve run anterior to the compartment. Ulnar nerve runs posteriorly. When the dislocation occurs, ulna goes posteriorly with the coronoid process slipping behind the trochlea. If you have all three of the dislocation, the coronoid process is fracture and a radial head fracture, this is the terrible triad, which is an unstable elbow fracture. So now we're ready to start a history and physical. We want to ask the patient what happened to cause this injury to occur. If there's been any previous elbow dislocations or injuries that could explain the deformity that we see. We then want to ask if there's any numbness or tingling in the fingers, which could be indicative of a neurovascular compromise. First, you want to do a gross inspection of the elbow, looking for deformities. You want to look for any open fractures or wounds. Then you want to feel the compartments. You want to pay special attention to the anterior compartment, which is vulnerable in this injury. Then you want to test for circulation, the radial pulse, capillary refill, the ulnar pulse. Then you want to look at the peripheral nerves. You want to test the motor and sensory functions of each nerve. For motor, radial nerve, median nerve, ulnar nerve. For sensory, radial nerve, median nerve, ulnar nerve. Then you want to test the range of motion of the elbow, extension, flexion, pronation, and supination. If there is any neurovascular compromise, that's an immediate indication for reduction. If they're neurovascularly intact, the patient's ready to go to x-ray. You should get an AP lateral and oblique view of the elbow. If you have any concern that there is a fracture associated with the injury, you should get a CT as well. So this can be a very painful procedure. It will definitely require pain control. All of our reductions will go through the same maneuvers. Supination of the forearm, flexion of the elbow, and pressure on the olecranon. First, you're grasping the patient's arm with your fingers over the olecranon. You're gonna put your thumb in the antecubital fossa and your other hand in the mid forearm. You're gonna be keeping the arm stabilized with your left hand with pressure on the olecranon, putting traction with your right hand, keeping the arm supinated and flexing. You should feel a confirmatory clunk. The second technique we're gonna do, grasp the patient's hand overhand and you can put your elbow into the antecubital fossa with your other hand on the olecranon on. Traction here while keeping it supinated. Flex the arm and put downward force onto the forearm with this pressure on the olecranon. Any technique you use, you should feel a confirmatory clunk. You should stabilize the arm with the sling and do a neurovascular exam. You should repeat x-rays to confirm the reduction. Place the patient in a posterior long arm splint where they should stay immobilized for five to 10 days and follow up with an orthopedic surgeon. So that was an overview of posterior elbow dislocations and how we manage them in the emergency department. For more information, check out our show notes. That's it, see you next time. Stay safe. <laughs>